Hi class, in this lecture we continue our study of polynomial and rational functions by moving into just polynomial functions and their graphs. So this is going to be a long video where I'm going to, a long lecture where I'm going to talk about all the different properties of this. All right, so here are going to be the objectives of what we're going to work through today. So we want to talk about polynomial functions, graphing some basic polynomial functions, then we're going to look at some harder polynomial functions, we're going to talk about the graphs of these, their end behavior, and then we're going to be talking about using zeros to graph polynomial functions. So we know zeros are basically the x-intercepts of the polynomial function. Okay, so basically, let's start. What, what is a polynomial function? So before we begin our study of polynomial functions, we have to have some terminology that we can work with. So a polynomial function of degree n, and remember n is the highest exponent, okay, here in this case the degree, is a function of this form. P of x is equal to a sub n, x sub n, plus, and then notice how I have a sub n minus 1, x to the n minus 1. So if n was 5, this is now 4. And you're going to keep going down, 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 down until you get to a sub 1, x, plus a sub 0, with no variable component to it. Okay, This is where n is a non-negative integer here. These a's, these a sub 0, a1, all the way to a sub n, these are called the coefficients of the polynomial. a sub 0, this last one, is the constant coefficient or the constant term. It has no x part of it. It's, it's just the constant at the end. What's really important is this number a sub n. Okay, This is the coefficient of the highest power here, the highest exponent. This is what's called the leading coefficient. Okay, that's, that's going to be important for describing the behavior of a graph. And this a sub n, x sub n is called the leading term. Okay, this, this is really important for helping us sketch the graph of this curve. Okay, just for a quick example here so you can see, suppose you have this polynomial, 3x to the 5th plus 6x to the 4th minus 2x cubed plus x squared plus 7 minus 6. Okay, this is a degree 5 polynomial. Okay, all these numbers in front of the variables, including the coefficient term, or the constant term, are called coefficients. The leading term, the one with the highest exponent, is 3x to the fifth. The leading coefficient is 3, okay? And the constant term is negative 6. All important information to know. Here's just a list of some uh, more examples of polynomials. I'm not going to read through them all, but like, let's just take a look at this third one here. 2x cubed minus 6x squared plus 10. This is a degree 3 polynomial. Okay, The leading term is 2x cubed, so the leading coefficient is 2. All right, And the constant term is just that 10 at the end. Knowing that it's a degree 3, it has a positive leading term. Actually, a leading coefficient, excuse me, actually tells us a lot about the graph. Okay, So we're gonna, even, even now in my mind, when I have that information, I'm able to kind of think about what the graph is going to look like. And after this lecture, you will, you will be able to as well. All right, so let's graphing some basic polynomial functions here. Okay, so the simplest polynomial function are, are monomials of this form. Uh, P of x is equal x to the n, okay? So when, when n is equal to 1, you have a linear graph like this, a straight line. When n is equal to 2, you have this parabola, this U-shaped parabola. When n is equal to 3, you have this type of a graph. This is what a cubic looks like. When n is equal to 4, all right, look what you have. You have a, a u that it seems like it's a little bit flatter at the bottom. But, but look at x is equal to 4, x is equal to 2. Both have the u shape. x is equal to 3, you have this cubic shape. Uh, excuse me, n is equal to 3. And when n is equal to 5, look, you also have this cubic shape. So this pattern would continue. So as the figure suggests, the graph of p of x is equal to x to n has the same general shape of the graph of uh, y is equal to x squared when n is even. So x to the 6th power would look like this. Okay, x to the 8th, x to the 10th, so on. And the uh, same general shape of y is equal to x to the cube when n is odd. So x to the 7th power would look a lot like this too. Okay, so that's important. Okay, when the leading, when the when the when the degree of the of the polynomial is even, it's going to look like a u. When it's odd, it's going to look like a cubic. Okay, so however, as the degree n becomes longer, the graphs become flatter around the origin and steeper elsewhere, which is what you noticed here. Here's x squared. 
Here's x to the fourth, flatter around the origin and then steeper. All right, so let's just sketch the graph of the following functions just real quickly, okay? And you can see what's going on here. So let's start with p of x is equal to negative x cubed, okay? So the graph of p of x is equal to negative x cubed is the reflection of the graph of y is equal to x cubed around the x-axis. So in this bluish type color here, we have the original x x cubed and then negative x cubed is just whoop, the reflection of it along the uh, x-axis okay this graph here all right uh, q of x is equal x minus 2 to the fourth power is the same graph as x um, x minus or excuse me x to the fourth power but what you're doing here is when you're inside the parentheses you're moving it to the right two units so we're just taking that x to the fourth and moving it over here Finally, let's take a look at this one here. We begin with the graph of um, y is equal x to the fifth, which is right here, like this. Okay, The graph of this is obtained by stretching the graph vertically and reflecting it around the x-axis. And you can see, see what's going on here for this one. Okay, Let's talk about graphs of polynomial functions with their end behavior. So the graphs of polynomial functions of degree 0 or 1 are lines, and the graphs of polynomials of degree 2 are parabolas. Okay, The greater the degree of the polynomial, the more complicated it, its graph can be. However, the graph of a polynomial function is continuous. That means there's no breaks or no holes in it. Okay, So when we graph these polynomial functions, they're always going to be nice, smooth curves. All right, moreover, the graph of polynomial function is a smooth curve, as I said. It has no corners or sharp points or cusps like you see here. So when we sketch these graphs, it's not, never going to go have these sharp turns like this. It's always going to be smooth and continuous when we sketch the graphs. Okay. So the domain of a polynomial function is always a set of all real numbers. So we can sketch only a small portion of the graph. All right, because we can't sketch all real numbers, obviously. However, for values of x outside the portion of the graphs we have drawn, we can describe the end behavior of a graph. Okay, the end behavior of a polynomial function or a polynomial is, is a description of what happens as x becomes large in the positive or negative direction. Okay, so to describe end behavior, we use the following arrow notation. So as x goes to infinity, okay, that is x increases without bound. So that means to go back. What happens is x goes to infinity, like it looks like this graph as x increases, this graph is whoop, going way, way, way up. Similarly, what happens is x goes to negative infinity, like here as you go this way, it looks like this graph is whoop, going down to negative infinity. Okay. So for example, this monomial y is equal to x squared way back in figure one, All right, has the following end behavior. y goes to infinity as x goes to infinity, and y also goes to infinity as x goes to negative infinity. Similarly, the monomial y is equal to x cubed all right, has the following end behavior. y goes to infinity as x goes to infinity, and y goes to negative infinity as x goes to negative infinity. Let me show you that. Go back to that real quick. This is y is equal to x cubed. Okay, So as x goes to infinity, so as x increases without bound, this graph whoop, is going up towards positive infinity. So as x goes to infinity, y goes to infinity. Now, on the flip side here, as x goes to negative infinity, as x decreases without bound, this function also decreases without bound. So this function goes down towards negative infinity. That's what we're saying here. OK. So for um, any polynomial, the end behavior is determined by the term that contains the highest power of x. OK, so it's basically by its degree. Because when x is large, the other terms are relatively insignificant in size. So the following box shows the four possible types of end behavior based on the highest power and the sign of the coefficient. Okay, so this is always important. Okay, if p is odd, okay, if the leading coefficient is positive, okay, so this is like 3, 5, 7, okay, y goes to infinity as x goes to infinity, and y goes to negative infinity as x goes to negative infinity. However, if the leading coefficient is negative, everything flips. y goes to infinity as x goes to negative infinity, and y goes to negative infinity as x goes to negative infinity. If the degree is even, okay, 
uh, like two, four, six, okay? Um, as x goes to infinity, y goes to infinity, and as x goes to negative infinity, y goes to positive infinity always, okay? That's just the end behavior. Notice how we have these lines in the middle, okay, That are these like dotted lines. We don't know what's going to happen in the middle. Finally, if the leading coefficient is negative, it's the flip. Y goes to negative infinity as X goes to negative infinity, and Y goes to negative infinity as X goes to infinity. Okay. Keep this handy. This is a really, really important um, uh, table or summary to, to look at. Okay. Knowing the degree and the leading coefficient tells us the end behavior of these graphs. Super important. All right. So let's take a look at this one. Let's determine the end behavior of this graph. Okay. Well, to know the end behavior, you need to know the degree. It's 4, it's even, and the leading coefficient is negative. So just looking back, even, leading coefficient is negative, so it's going to be this case right here. Okay, so the polynomial is degree 4, and leading coefficient is negative 2. Okay, so thus P has a negative degree and negative leading coefficient, so it has the following end behaviors like I said. Y is going to go to negative infinity as X goes to infinity. And at the same time, y is going to go to negative infinity as x goes to negative infinity. All right, so you can see here this is a graph of this function, okay? And you can see that that end behavior is illustrated. So the graph here does show exactly what we thought we would see. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is using zeros to graph polynomial functions. Okay, so if a polynomial, if, if p is a polynomial function, then this value c is a zero of a p if when you plug this c in, you get the function value equal to zero, okay? In other words, the zeros of p are the solutions of the polynomial equation p of x is equal to zero. Note that if p of c equal to zero, then the graph of p has an x-intercept at x is equal to c, okay? So what we're doing, these zeros find the x-intercept, okay? So the x-intercepts of the graph are the zeros of the function, okay? All right, so let me show you how to how to find these, okay? To find zeros of, of a polynomial p, we factor and then use the zero product property always. For example, if I say, okay, find the zeros of this equation, all right, or this function, p of x is equal to x squared plus x minus 6. We first factor p to get the following. p of x, this will factor into x minus 2 times x plus 3. So what you're going to see here is you have two factors. You're going to set this equal to zero and solve, okay? When you set this equal to zero to solve, one of them is x minus two is equal to zero. Well, when you solve that, you get x is equal to two. Boom, all right? That's a, that's a zero, all right? Another way you can do it is like, okay, what could I plug in here to get this equal to zero? Two. If I plug two minus two, that's zero. How about in here? That's uh, x plus three is equal to zero, so x is equal to minus three. So from this function right here, I've just found, this is great, I've just found the two zeros of the function. I found the two intercepts. Okay, so let's talk about guidelines for graphing, okay? And we're going to do all this. You're going to find the zeros first. Factor the polynomial to find all its real zeros. These are the x-intercepts of the graph. Next, you're going to find some test points. Make a table of values for the polynomial. Include test points to determine whether the graph of the polynomial lies above or below the x-axis on the intervals determined by the zero, and include the y-intercept on the table. Next, we're going to find the end behavior of the polynomial. Okay, talked about that. And then finally, you're going to use all this information to graph. You're going to plot the intercepts and the other points you find in the table, and then sketch a smooth curve that passes through these points and exhibits the required end behavior. All right, let's do this example, okay? Let's let p of x equals x cubed minus 2x squared minus 3x. I want to find the zeros of p, and then I want to just sketch the graph. Okay, to find the zeros, first thing you're going to do is you're going to factor completely. Do factor out an x. Okay, that's great. Now factor this trinomial, and it's going to factor into x minus 3 times x plus 1. Okay, so now you're going to use the zero... Um, the zero property um, to, to solve this, okay, zero product property. So you see that either x is equal to zero, this first one, three, x is equal to three here, or x is equal to minus one. 
So this graph has three x-intercepts. So it's going to cross the, the, the x-axis three times. Okay. So the x-intercepts are x is equal to 0, x is equal to 3, x is equal to minus 1. We see that the y-intercept, p of 0 is equal to 0. Like if I plug 0 into this equation, I just get 0. So we make a table of values of p of x, making sure we choose test points between and to the right and left of the successive zeros. Okay. All right. Also, since p is an odd degree and its leading coefficient is positive, we know the end behavior. Y goes to infinity as X goes to infinity, and Y goes to negative infinity as X goes to negative infinity. All right, so here are some, some uh, test points that I picked, okay? Notice here, here are my X-intercepts, negative 1, 0, and 3. Okay, those are my X-intercepts. So I pick a point outside the first one, pick a, pick a value between negative 1 and 0, which is 1 half. I'll, maybe I'll pick some values between 0 and 3, 1 and 2. And then I'll pick a value outside of that. I'll pick four. And here what you can see is you can see the test points plotted. Okay, like when I plug in negative two, I get negative 10. Boom, right there. Negative one, zero. Negative one half gave me seven eighths. Zero gave me zero. One gave me negative four. Two gave me negative six. Three gave me zero. And four gave me 20. And I can use those nice points to plot a nice smooth curve here. All right, class, I hope that helped as a quick introduction to these topics.